If you think Node.js is old and outdated, you couldn't be further from the truth. They've been adding so many amazing features like TypeScript support, built-in test runners, built-in debuggers, and so much more. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering 10 of the most amazing features that have come out recently. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And the very first concept I wanna talk about is the built-in support for TypeScript in Node.js. Normally, if you just run Node and a TypeScript file like this, you're gonna get a bunch of errors because it doesn't know how to parse that TypeScript file. But with the new experimental feature, you can add the flag experimental strip types. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove all of the TypeScript types. Just make sure you spell experimental properly. There we go. It's going to get rid of all the TypeScript types in your code and run it just like normal JavaScript. You notice the output I get down here is the correct output. It's logging out this person object and the text person. So we know our code is running. Now you will notice I do get some errors, two in particular. This very first error is just a warning telling me that this is an experimental feature and I shouldn't expect it to always work perfectly because it's experimental. That's perfectly okay. The second warning I'm getting is actually related to the second feature I wanna talk about, which is that Node.js now perfectly supports ECMAScript modules, which is the default import export syntax that you're used to. Instead of having to use your normal require syntax that you normally use in Node.js, you can just use import and export and it's going to work just fine. That's what this second warning is telling us. It's saying, hey, it looks like you're using that import export syntax. That's okay, we know how to parse that. But if you wanna make this parsing a little bit quicker, all you need to do is in your package JSON, add a single type, set it to module. And now it's essentially telling Node.js you're gonna be using ECMAScript modules. So you can leave this off if you want, but adding it in is just gonna make your site slightly more performant. So I'd recommend adding that in. And now if we run our code, you notice the only warning that we're gonna get is because we're using that experimental feature. Now these are two relatively simple things, but the next one I wanna talk about is a built-in test runner, which means you can run tests with just Node without installing things like Jest or anything like that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We can create a script file. We'll call it script.test.js to say that we're gonna be testing this script file right here. And I'll show you in a little bit how you can do this with TypeScript or JavaScript, it won't matter. And what we can do is we can just like you would in Jest, type out like describe. And you can see we're importing this from node test. And I wanna make sure I use my normal import syntax. So I'm gonna say that this is going to be importing this from this particular file, just like that. So it's node colon test, that's where all of this is going to be coming from. And there's also a node colon in here, assert, that's gonna be all of our different assertions. So we can say here, we're gonna describe this is adult function right here. So we're gonna describe the is adult function and we want to run a test. And you'll know in most test running libraries, you either use it or test. Again, you can use both of those inside of here. So we'll just say it, again, import it from that exact same library. This is built into node, which is amazing. And we can say, passes if they are 18 or over. There we go. And then we can come in here and we can do different assertions using the assert keyword. Just make sure you import it from the node assert library because that's the one that's actually going to be doing our assertions for this particular library. And we can check for a bunch of different things. You can see we have all these different checks down here. In our case, if we wanna just check to see if something's true, we can just pass it directly to this function. So we can call is adult and we can pass it in a person with a name of Kyle and an age, let's just say it's gonna be 29, there we go. And now if we give this a quick save, we can actually have a test inside of here. And to test multiple different types of things, I'm gonna come in here and just create a really simple sum function. So we'll say A and B, let's just give those types because we are in TypeScript, there we go. Return A plus B. And now inside of here, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it down, we're gonna be testing sum. We're gonna say it adds the numbers Again, doesn't really matter what any of this says. And then here, I'm gonna use that sum function. I'm gonna pass it in one and two. There we go. And I wanna make sure that it's equal to three. So that's where I can come in here and I wanna say, I wanna make this sure that this is a strict equal. And that's just gonna use the triple equal signs instead of the double equal signs. If you're unsure of what the difference is between the two, I have a full video on it. I'll link in the cards and description for you. So now we have our two assertions in place and now we can actually run this. So to run this, you can just type in node dash dash test and that's gonna run all your different tests. And you notice immediately looks like we have a little bit of a problem. That's cause I'm importing a TypeScript file. So I need to just add in the .ts extension inside of here. And then again, to make sure that it actually runs my TypeScript, I'm gonna need to add that experimental flag. Experimental 
strip types. There we go. And finally, I'm still getting an error because I need to make sure I import my sum function so we can use it. Now, hopefully it should be fixed. And there we go. If we scroll up, you can see all my different tests, all the different descriptions, and it's telling me which ones are passing. Now, this is the most bare bones version of this Node.js testing, but there's so much else that you can do. You can do mocking, you can do spies, you can even get test coverage. For example, I can come in here and I can add in that I want to do experimental test coverage, just like that. And now you can see I get test coverage saying I've tested 100% of all of these different files that are going on. So that's another really great feature of this. It has built in test coverage. And you can even change how your formatting goes out. Because right now this formatting, I mean, it's not amazing, but it has support for multiple different formatters inside of it. For example, I can come in here and I can say my test reporter is going to be equal to tap. And tap is like a standard test format and you can see it outputs in this particular format. And there are different parsers that can parse this formatted text and actually give you out any format that you want. So this is like a standard format, kind of like JSON and XML are a standard format and other things can read this format and export it in essentially any type of data that you want. Now, generally when you're writing tests, what you're gonna wanna do is take all of the code for actually running your test and you're gonna wanna put that in your package JSON script. So inside of here for our scripts, we're just gonna add in a test script that's going to run this exact code. That way I can just run npm test and it's going to run everything that's inside of here. I just need to make sure I save this file and then run it and there we go. You can see it is now working just fine. Now I'm gonna remove the test reporter so we can go back to our default test reporter and give that a quick save and run this and you can see that that works. Now I'm gonna show you how you can actually do this with TypeScript files as well. Because if I change this to b.ts, by default, it's not actually gonna work. When I run this, you're gonna notice that technically it says everything works, but if we scroll up, there are absolutely no tests that are running. There's a zero in all of these different categories. And that's because by default, this is just looking for .ts files. So if you wanna look for specific files, you just need to tell it what you want to look for. So we can say, look for any file in any folder that ends in .test.ts. Now, if we give this a quick run, you can see it's running through everything again, and it's actually picking up that this is a TypeScript file. So again, this is a really nice feature that we can do all of this TypeScript stuff directly inside of Node.js. Now, one thing to mention about TypeScript support though, that I believe I forgot to mention is that this just removes the types. It doesn't actually do any type checking for you. For example, if you have incorrect typing inside of here, for example, let's just say I type this as a string instead of a number. So now I have a different TypeScript errors. My code's not gonna care. It's still going to run just fine as you can see. That's because all it does is remove the types. It doesn't actually check to make sure that your types are correct. To be honest though, this isn't really that big of an issue because generally when I'm using that TypeScript support inside of Node.js, it's when I wanna use a smaller just test project to work with a few things and I wanna do it in TypeScript. So this makes it so I can really easily write simple code in TypeScript without having to worry about a bunch of complex types script compilers. Now, another thing, which is the next feature I want to talk about is that when you're writing out tests, generally you want to be able to watch for any time your code changes. That way I don't have to manually keep coming down here and running this test file over and over again every time I make a change. This is where the dash dash watch flag comes in. And this works with any Node.js code you run. It doesn't matter if you're running a test or you're running an actual file. If you add the watch flag, it's just going to rerun that thing every single time the files change. So I can come in here and now when I run my test, you'll notice it doesn't actually finish out here. It's just waiting for me to make any changes. Let's say I come in here and I change my sum function to be a minus instead. Now I give it a save and I scroll up and you notice immediately it says my sum test has failed and it's given me all the different reasons for why that has failed. And it's just watching that. So now when I change this back to a plus and I save and I scroll up, you can now see all these tests are passing. So this is a really great way to get all that additional information with watching. And I can do this with anything. For example, I can say that I wanna watch my script.ts file. And of course I need to make sure since I'm doing TypeScript, I strip out those types. There we go. Give that a quick save. Now, if I were to change this, for example, let's change the age here to 39, give it a save. You can now see it prints out 39 right there. So this is a super nice feature. You essentially never need to install NodeMon ever again because it's built into Node.js with this watch flag. Another library that you can essentially completely remove from your workflow is .env. It's a library that almost everyone installs to work with .env files. For example, if I have a secret value, which is just set to secret, and I wanna access that in Node.js, well, inside of here, I could come down here. I could just say that we're gonna print out my secret, which is process.env.secret value. And now if I were to run my file, we'll get rid of this watch flag so we can just see what it looks like. You can see that it prints out undefined. And that's because by default, Node.js doesn't read anything from .env files. That's where normally you would install the .env package. But you can now just 
add what your env file is. So I can type in env file like this, and I can pass it in whatever file I want. So most likely you just put an equal sign here, dot env, which is what you almost always will use, hit enter, and now you can see it actually gets the value from that env variable. So all you need to do is just dash dash env file, set it equal to whatever your file name is or file path, and it's going to automatically read that in for you, just like the dot env package would. This is a really nice quality of life feature for Node.js. Now the next amazing feature from Node.js is they're really going more towards promises instead of the older way of callbacks. For example, if you ever worked with the file system before, so we can import, for example, let's just get read file from FS, you'll know that this takes in a callback. For example, we'll pass in read file here, and we'll just pass it in a path to a file like script.ts, doesn't really matter. You'll notice the next thing we pass in is a callback that gives us an error as well as the different data that we're going to be getting back. This sucks to work with in pretty much every environment, and you're almost always going to want to convert this into a promise but you don't need to do that anymore. And that's because there's actually a promise-based version of all of these different files. Now I can just use read file and this is going to return to me a promise. So what I can do is just say dot then on the end of it and I'm going to get out my data. Or if I wanted to do a dot catch, that's going to give me the error. So I get the exact same user experience of if I had read file from before, I get the exact same data and error, but now I have the much better developer experience of having the dot then dot catch and so on. I can even just throw in an await here and wait for that by getting the data just like this. And normally you wouldn't be able to put an await at the top level of a file like this. Normally it would have to be inside of an async function that is going to do this code for you, something like this. But with the newest version of Node.js, they've actually added the ability for you to have top level await support. So I can write code just like this and it's going to work just fine. To prove that this actually works, I'll just console log the data. It's not gonna be readable data, but we can actually see it by running the code. You can see I get my buffer right here of all the different data inside of this particular file. Now, while we're on the topic of the file system, I wanna talk about the new addition of Beyond they'll actually get things by a glob. So normally when you write out things, like when we were writing out our test thing right here, we're writing out a glob. And it's kind of like a little bit of a hybrid of a regular expression and normal just strings. And it lets you select a variety of different files and so on. And now we have the actual ability to select things based on a glob to get all the information. So it retrieves all the files matching a specific glob. So what I can do here is I can say files equals await. And I wanna call this glob function. And I'm gonna just use that exact same .test.ts that I was using before. And this should get me back all the different files from here. We're gonna paste this in. I don't know if this will actually let me run it, but we'll just give that a quick run. And it looks like actually this uses a generator. So let me just get the very next one so we can see what the very first one looks like. And we're gonna run this out. And it looks like this actually returns a promise. The glob itself is not a promise, but getting the next one is. So now we'll throw in the await right here and then give this a quick run. And there we go. You can see we're getting the value for the file name as well as any other things that we need. So that's really perfect. I can get all the different files and loop through each one inside of an iterator, or I could put them inside of like a for each loop or anything like that. It really doesn't matter. Now, this next feature is one that I really love, which is the ability to super simply debug Node.js applications using like your normal Chrome debugger. So what you can do inside of Node, all you need to do is add the dash dash inspect keyword. And what that's going to do is allow you to actually debug this inside of a normal Chrome debugger. Now, if we do this in our application, our application essentially immediately closes out. So that's not ideal. So what you can do is instead of using normal dash dash inspect, we can add in a BRK, which stands for break. And all that's going to do is add a breakpoint at the very start of our application. So the very first thing that our file does, it immediately puts a breakpoint in there. Now, in order to actually access this particular thing inside your debugger, all you need to do is open up a Chrome debugger on literally any page that you want, and you'll see this little green icon up here. Click on this, and that's going to open up another window, and this window is where your actual application is running. You can see immediately it's hit a breakpoint, so if I just step out to this, you can see I'm on this particular line right here, and I can step through exactly what I want to do, seeing what all my code looks like in every single section. And this is a really nice way, even in my console, you'll see it prints out all the different stuff inside of here. So this is a really easy way for me to deal with the debug, do different performance things and so on directly inside of my Chrome debugger or whatever debugger I'm used to. I really love this feature inside of Node.js. This is an especially useful feature if you're using something like a web application that's a long running thing, it makes it really easy to do debugging in that. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is built-in support for WebSockets. So inside of JavaScript, there is a web standard for WebSockets, and right here, it's just called WebSocket, just like that. But now this is actually built directly into Node.js. So we could create a new WebSocket like this and connect to a particular WebSocket URL, that's whatever it's going to be. 
Now, the one downside to where this is currently at, because this is a rather new feature, is they only have the ability for you to connect to a WebSocket server. So from my Node.js application, I could connect to some WebSocket server and do communication back and forth. But I do not have the ability to create a WebSocket server that clients can connect to, which is honestly the main use case for WebSockets inside of a server-based environment. But the fact that they've already added this client side support makes me think that they're going to add the ability to create a WebSocket server directly into Node.js, which is amazing because that's something that a lot of applications need. And they generally have to reach to the WebSocket library, WS, or even socket.io for these particular use cases. So having it built in would be really nice. Now, the final new feature I want to talk about is something that's still rather experimental, but something that I think is really cool because now we have the ability to access a SQLite database directly inside of Node.js. To do this, I'm just gonna delete all the code I have and paste in some code with the example that I'm talking about. So you can see there's a built-in library called node colon SQLite, and that allows you to connect to either a file that you want to, or you can just use an in-memory database if you need something really quick and simple. But you could also put in, for example, a path to like a, you know, dot slash dev dot DB file or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. For our case, we're just gonna be using a memory based. And it allows you to execute statements, for example, creating tables. It allows you to insert data, query data, literally do anything that you want that is a SQLite related thing. And you just write raw SQL inside of this and it allows you to interact with a SQL database. So now what I can do is I can just run this code just like normal. Now you will notice I immediately get an error and that's because this is experimental. It's very experimental to the point where I need to add another experimental flag. And this one is just experimental SQLite. Now, when I hit enter, you can see I'm getting a warning that SQLite is experimental and things could change, but you'll notice I'm getting that data being printed out from this query right here. So I'm able to create a database table, add information to it, and query that information from the database and log that out to the console. This is a really nice feature because now it makes it even easier for you to deploy Node.js applications literally anywhere you want and have access to things like a database that are crucial to pretty much any application. So even if you're installing this on like a really small, you know, IoT device or something like that, you have access to a database, which I think is crucial. And this just scratches the surface of what you can do with Node.js with all these new features. Now, if you want to make sure you stay up to date with all the new features related to web development, whether it's Node.js, JavaScript, CSS, React, Next.js, doesn't matter what it is, you're going to want to make sure you sign up for my newsletter. I'll have it linked down in the description below, right on my blog page. You can sign up at the very top. And this is just going to make sure you stay up to date with all the latest and greatest. I send out free blog articles, free videos, extra information that you don't see here on YouTube, and it comes out every other week. So if you want to make sure you check that out, it'll be linked down in the description below for you. I highly recommend it.